Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. How wonderful to be with you today. Uh, you know, I was just up at Wanda's desk a while ago and we were going through uh, some mail today and I, I mean, you are the greatest people. Um, we feel like we know you. There are those who go out and buy a nice card and send to us with, uh, with a sweet message on it. So um, it's good to know you're out there and thank you for connecting with us and everything you do. And you're gonna love this program today. I have a good friend on today uh, who is a professor of psychology. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know when you're around a professor of psychology, you wonder if they're kind of analyzing you all the time and watching expressions and body movements, whatever. We'll see, Dr. Larry um, Hazel Becker has been a professor of psychology at the great university, uh, Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida for decades, really. We'll have him clear up the number of them and glad to have him back. And you know what's interesting about him, I want to talk about it a little bit. He was a gospel singer. And I wonder how many gospel singers have gotten a doctorate in psychology. Maybe he's the only one. We'll find out. But I'm so glad to have him back. And we're fixing what looks to me like a wonderful dish. Creamy chicken, asparagus, and bacon tortellini. Uh, say no more. We're going to fix it for you. I again want to offer you the booklet, Is God Speaking to Me? There's so many things going on in this culture right now. And if you're not careful, you're going to be carried along with the culture. Not a good idea for a believer. Not a good idea for a Christian. Because God hasn't changed as everything else in this world changes. God has never changed. And he's still speaking to his people. He speaks through his word. And this little booklet kind of just nails all of it. I'd like for you to have this for any gift to the program. You can write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And also, if you use a credit or a debit card, 1-800-229-0059, and we'll get it out to you. And I don't know about you, Stephanie, but I love this kind I'm of meal. I'm excited about <laughs> this one. This one looks delicious. And it's got heavy a cream. cup of heavy cream. What more could you want, really? So yeah. I have a pound of chicken that we've sauteed up with a tablespoon of oil, a quarter teaspoon of Italian seasonings, mm. and salt. Mm -hmm. So I'm just cooking that up a little bit. And then we're going to put in some asparagus that we we nuked up a little bit so it's a little bit softer than... But it is but fresh. But still crunchy. It was, That's a half a pound. It was nice, yes. And then I have eight pieces of bacon. We're going to put three quarters of this in and then we'll save some for the top. Oh, Yum. boy, I think this is something I'm going to put fix at home. tortellini in that we cooked up. It, you just boil it for three minutes. This is a super simple recipe. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. And then I'm going to turn the heat up. I'm going to put in a cup of heavy cream. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is going to be so delicious. I know. And, um, you know, I don't like the whips you buy at the store. I like real whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I know never figured that. out what she those others are really made of. But. Plastic, but it's delicious. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is just going to heat up for a second, and then I'm going to put in some Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Do you? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you do. You look at recipe and think, well, I might do this. This. If I did this, I would put the grape tomatoes in it. I think. Okay, that would be Slice good. Slice them in half. Sure. Maybe just for the color. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. But. Always, always add and delete according to your tastes at home. As right? we make this program, it is in July, and Stephanie has outside of her office that nice little board that says, "How many days till Christmas?" Do I you wait, know right now. Uh, One hundred and fifty-seven. But what? I wait till July. I'm nice. I'm that nice. Mm -hmm. Or it would just drive everyone crazy all year. So that was Parmesan cheese. Well, so I like. I read somewhere last. Uh, Last month, I believe, maybe it was the beginning of July, mm -hmm. that Hobby Lobby has their Christmas stuff out. Oh, they do. I'm so happy. But you have to stay and finish this before okay, you go to okay, Hobby yes. Lobby. Listen, some people hate it. They hate that they, but it makes me so happy. I love it. Because I, I can just go and walk the aisles and buy one ornament and it mm. changes my whole attitude. Uh -huh. Well, um, the Hobby Lobby was started by... Uh, 
David Green and his wife. Mm -hmm. I have met them. I'm not saying I know them, but I've met them, and I'm telling you, they are the real deal. Mm -hmm. They give tons of money to missions. Yep. And uh, they close on Sunday so that their workers can go to church. Yep. I love people that don't go with the tide. You yes. know, Christians aren't supposed to go they with the tide. They stand for what they believe in. Mm -hmm. And they are. Okay. They are. I'm put some, this Crazy. needs to cook longer, but we have a great guest to get to, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm going to. I want you to stay here because I want him to psychoanalyze you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> would that be fun? No, thank you. The audience you. know that would be fun. They know everything about me, so can I have my fork? Yes. Thank you. Uh, that's true. She's an open book. I really, really am. I'm going to ask. It's so good. I'm going to ask the professor about that. What about people who are open books? Mm. Oh, boy, isn't that, that good? so good. You want this. You so want good. this one. It's called creamy chicken, asparagus, and bacon tortellini. If you just put in, like, creamy tortellini, we'll know what you mean. So, Wanda will not like that. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Get as many of the words as you can, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, recipe's free. Information's coming up on your screen. Choose the way you want it. It's the best for you. Stay right there, and you're going to meet one of my good friends, uh, Professor Larry Hazelbaker and uh, maybe give you a little psychological advice. Stay there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I'm delighted to welcome back to the program Dr. Larry Hazelbaker, who uh, you're kind of winding up, is it 30 years? 36 years. 36 years. 36 years. At Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida. And when I first was aware of you, I don't, I'm not sure exactly when we met, but you were a gospel singer with your family. And so... I wonder how many gospel singers have ever become a doctor of psychology. <laughs> <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> yeah, what was it, what was it that uh, turned you to that kind of education? We don't yeah. expect that out of a gospel singer, really. Yeah. I know a lot of gospel singers. Well, the family, the Hazelbaker family, started singing in 1965. Mm -hmm. I was 15. Mm -hmm. My brother was 13. And we just did what you did back then. You were Southern all gospel. over this part of I Florida, was. I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, in 1970, I met my wife in Indiana. She's from Indianapolis. And, uh, long story there. But we got married, and we continued to, to travel and sing as a family until about 1973. And I went back to Bible College, Southeastern, and earned my degree. Soon as I uh, finished um, that bachelor's degree, I got hired by Ernest Holbrook at uh, Plant City Faith Assembly of God, Faith Temple Assembly of God. Well, now, and was that a ministerial degree? Maybe no, not. it was a secondary education history degree. But back then, everyone who graduated from Southeastern graduated with a degree in Bible mm -hmm. as well. And so I became a, an associate pastor. We did that for three years. And in 1981, uh, I started back doing some music solo work uh, and did evangelistic work. A couple years after that, I got, and during that time, I went to Rollins in Orlando and picked up a master's mm -hmm. degree in counseling. And, um, and then um, 1982, 83, uh, Brother Strader, Carl Strader hired me to be a staff counselor. I was still out doing a little music and evangelistic work. Um, in 1985, at the San Antonio General Council, of the Assemblies of God. Ed Gurley, Dr. Ed Gurley, who was the Vice President for Academic Affairs at Southeastern, stopped by my booth that we had in the Exhibition Hall and offered me a job. And I thought, well, I'm, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a traveling evangelist and yeah. a gospel singer still. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but that was the beginning. And I went over there and taught a couple of classes. And then within a, a year, they hired me full time mm -hmm. uh, with the condition that I would go ahead and pursue a, a doctorate. Mm -hmm. which I did, and that's, the, that's how that happened. <laughs> you know, uh, people have uh, varying ideas of uh, psychology, and 
our viewers know that we have Dr. David Clark on here every month. Great, good, great and, guy. Yes, oh, and he is guy. biblically based because um, psychology can go all over the map and can give you some very bad advice and, and very bad uh, direction in yeah, life. Yeah. Well, there, you know, it's kind of broken up into two uh, sections. You, over here, you have the scientists. Uh, in terms of operational definition, psychology is uh, the scientific method of looking at the mind and the behavior. On the other, on the other hand, you have philosophers. And that's where you kind of get into, uh, you take all of these theories that have been generated through the mm -hmm. years from Freud to uh, Rogers to Skinner and all of that, and, and, and you take all of that and from those you extrapolate various types of, of applications. We mm -hmm. call that psychotherapy. So you take a theory and apply it and that becomes a therapy or a therapeutic model. Mm -hmm. And that can just, that can, that can just go any, you know, any way that uh, the person who is app mm -hmm. applying it uh, wants now, it to. Now, do you do individual counseling? Not anymore. Mm -hmm. Nope, I did that for a long because time. Because I remember back when, I've got nine great grandchildren now, so I've got a lot to remember. And um, the thought of bringing a teacher psychology into a Bible school had been an oxymoron. It, it now, where did was. they see the where did they see the need for that? I have some ideas of my own, but let me. Well, you know, back when I went there, you can at the timeline. I went there in '86, and of course, uh, even my great dear beloved mentor friend, who's with Jesus, Brother Strader, uh, was not really, you know, yeah. engaged in psychology, mm -hmm. but he hired me. Mm -hmm. Because he said we have deliverance people over here, and we have, the, and I need somebody to come in here and deal with. He was very and, wise to know he, that he was, and so he gave me that opportunity. And so, when, when at, during that time, you can look at how psychology was perceived. In fact, uh, Arthelene, when I walked on the campus at Southeastern University in 1986, I had religion majors do this to me. Yeah, <laughs> I was ahead of you on that one. <laughs> yeah, and and then. Various things happened with high-profile evangelists mm -hmm. during that time who were very anti-psychology. And within about three or four years, mm -hmm. my career path developed a little bit of respect. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so it's just grown and grown at one time. The Department of Psychology was the second largest department uh, on the campus well, in Southeastern. My heart is with ministerial <clears throat> students, and boy, they need, they need to have a relationship with the Lord. They need to have their head on straight. and But they're all coming out. This culture is where we all live. So you'll have, you can probably tell me, you have young men uh, coming through who've never had a whole lot of direction. What about fatherlessness? Yeah. My, yeah. I think about a pastor who's never had a father and how that can change the type of pastor he would be. Indeed. Do you deal with a lot of those? I have, yeah, a lot. So heartbreaking. And these kids, and I say kids because I'm an old guy now. Sure. And, and, and I have students now who are children of students that I had, you know, a, dec mm. uh, a generation ago. Right. Uh, these kids, I say these kids, these kids are killing themselves because the expectations are so high and they're so unrealistic and they just cannot measure up to that. Mm -hmm. And so there are a, a lot of psychological, and I'll use that, uh, and I'll, I'll integrate that with theological. A lot of psychological and theological problems uh, are out there. Uh, the expectations are um, so, so high and very difficult to be validated. How do you validate the anointing? Mm -hmm. How does one uh, confirm or affirm the anointing. We, as we were growing up, we used to, how many people would come to the altar? Mm -hmm. Or how many times uh, we would hear amen? How many, how big, how much the offering Yeah, or the response. The response. And I, I actually did some research a while back. Um, and the title of the research was Addicted to the Response. Addicted to the Response. Wow. And so I surveyed 360 pastors. It's kind of like... Uh, we can only measure what the Holy Spirit did by the numbers. That's it, yeah. Yep. That's, the, that's the perception. There is no thermometer for the anointing. No. Like, you know, and so you have to use what you have. And that is, uh, you know, the, the, the validating mm. the 10 hours a week a pastor puts in studying for mm. uh, the word to be spoken and no one comes forward. 
Mm -hmm. And it gets to be a little yeah. overwhelming for them. Um, you're married to a doc doctor <laughs> yeah. of, of... She has PhD in mathematics and science. So do you call her Dr. Deborah and she calls you Dr. Larry around the house? Or how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> Got to be respectful of all these <laughs> oh, Arthur, educational... Arthur, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. <laughs> does she ever She's left brain. See, she's math and science. So uh -huh. she thinks left brain. I'm right brain. I see all sorts of gray things, you know, and she says it's black and white. Does she ever say to you, don't you dare analyze Oh, me. I did that one time. One time. <laughs> back when, Boy, you're a good We've been learner. married 50 years. Quick learner. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was back about maybe 1978. Mm -hmm. Never, I've not done that since. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and you're the founder of Harbor Institute. What is that exactly? Uh, 20 years ago, um, I felt this unction, that's a word we used to use a lot, from the Holy Spirit to try to help pastors. Mm. And so I wanted to help them with the things that we were talking mm. about, this affirmation piece and this confirmation, the anointing, the expectations, unrealistic uh, versus idealistic, et cetera. Um, and it became very low key. Uh, I did not, um, it wasn't well received by a lot of people because I wanted confidentiality. And my good friend from, who was my youth camp pastor when I was 12 years old, DJ Burrell, uh, oh, I was, remember him. Oh, yeah, he was quite... I uh, liked him. Oh, he was a wonderful man. And so I went before a group of people who I needed to support what I was doing with confidence. I had to, I had to mm -hmm. maintain confidence. And Brother Burrell said, you know, if I sent someone to Dr. Larry Hazelbaker and he called, you know, this movement, this denomination, and ratted them out, he said that would be the end for me. And so I, I received an affirmation from the Presbytery of the Penn Florida District Council of the Assemblies of God like 20 years ago. Uh, I do not take referrals from the district. Uh, so the, the, the people that come to me or did come to me, uh, they could rely on me to keep mm -hmm. my mouth shut and try to help them. Now, don't get me wrong, if, if this was character or something that where they were harming their people or could harm their people, then of course I'm ethically uh, obligated then to, to deal with that. Well, it's kind of, <clears throat> where does a pastor go? Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how people would accept this, but wasn't Jesus the greatest psychologist? When I, when I look at the story of the genius of the woman caught in adultery, yeah. and he works that thing so that all those hypocrites had to leave. Yes, he did. And that a good psychologist? I, well, you know, <clears throat> Jesus absolutely encouraged us to be the people that we are. Mm -hmm. He either be hot or you be cold. Mm -hmm. But whatever you are, be what you are. Mm -hmm. And so Carl Rogers comes along and creates this person-centered or client-centered theory. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he coined a new term. It's called congruency. Now, that's mm -hmm. a fancy term yeah. for consistency. And what he said mm -hmm. was that whatever a person is on the inside, must mirror that which is on the outside, or that person is an inconsistent person or an incongruent mm -hmm. person. So Jesus was the greatest Rogerian. Oh. If we want to take that all the way back, I know that like you, that may be hypocritical to some people, <laughs> but he encouraged people to be who they were, who you are, be who you are. And if you're not, you're going to, you're going to have great distress in your life. There were so many times when he dealt with the Pharisees, uh, Somebody in your shoes could say that was a good psychological move. It's, it's yeah. not a bad word. No, it's not a bad word. Uh, at all. No, psychology is nothing more than the study of behavior. I mean, mm -hmm. let's not make it, you know, a hyper That makes it too easy. We want to make it really I know, difficult. I know. Yeah. I, I have taught this for 36 years and still mm -hmm. doing it. And uh, so, yeah, it's not a bad thing. You know, you can make it a bad thing. I, I, I used to tell Anything my... Anything you can make it bad. I used to tell my, my students when I would teach intro... To psychology. You know, I think probably, this is just a, a statement, that probably there are more people in hell today because of bad theology than bad psychology. Mm -hmm. Well, it can, it can be ruinous, yeah. be detrimental. Yeah. When you're, teach, you're teaching these younger people, and they didn't all come from a, you know, a, a good ch Christian home. When I, when I was in Bible college, I, I would imagine there was a sameness about the students mm -hmm. that we were really regular church attenders and, and we, 
we were from an intact family. Right. I think one of the greatest tragedies today is the fatherlessness. Yeah. It, it, Larry, it makes me mad. And I think, you know, if there's some deadbeat dad out there right now, shame on you. It's, it's, it's not right. It's not right. And we have thousands of young boys Absolutely. never had a father in the home. If I had a mic, I'd drop it right now for that statement right mm -hmm. there. That is, we have to have good models in order to be good imitators. Mm. And we're just lacking in that big time. Yeah, and uh, I see Promise Keepers is really making yes, a comeback. I, I That'll does. help. Oh, yes. That will help. Absolutely. But also, uh, I think there's a lot of things inside in culture, going back to the women's movement, that c continually s pushes men down, push, 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 <clears throat> degrade them, degrade them, yeah. make fun of them. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a pretty sick culture. Yes. Do you know all you have to do is get back to the Word of God? What does it say and do it? That's indeed. Bam. Right mm -hmm. there. It's another mic. I, 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 the Word of God is quick. It's powerful, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing center of body and soul mm -hmm. and of the joints. Mm -hmm. And as a discerner, that's mm -hmm. the big piece, is a discerner of mm -hmm. the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. And I've told my students for almost 40 years now, if you've got your nose in Freudian theory more than you've got it in the Word of God, mm -hmm. you're going to be bad in bad shape going down mm -hmm. the road. Read God's Word. It is absolutely the... the, the uh, Structure, it, 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 it creates for you mm -hmm. a solid way of living your life. Live it. Doesn't mean you're going, not going to have issues and problems. But to the clo at, as close as you can get to the Word of God, do that because that will mean the fewer troubles that you will have. Mm -hmm. Live by God's Word and you'll have less trouble. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you're, not, you're going to be trouble free, but you'll have fewer problems because you'll have the Holy Spirit there to help you. Mm -hmm. God will help you. We just we're not teaching that and preaching that. We want to make sure that we can we're capable of pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And I'm going to tell you, as an old guy that's been at this, I was born in 1950. You do the math, okay? I Whoa. cannot make it without God and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the Word of God. I could not make it. It's too much confusion out here. Mm -hmm. And God, one thing about God, He is not the author of confusion. Yeah, one of my favorite scriptures, because it can be applied so many ways, good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. That's great. And That's great. when I think of that first part of it, this is what Christian psychology can do. It mm -hmm. give, gives you some answers, give, gives you some whys and wherefores, like, why do I act like this? Well, somebody yeah. can probably help you discover that. Yep. Peter wrote, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, uh -huh. be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that mm -hmm. is to be brought unto you at the revelation. That's our responsibility. If, uh, if you, I should have thrown this to you before that we started, but if you could categorize mm -hmm. maybe one familiar, one kind of sameness type of uh, problem situation with students, you're dealing with people from their late teens through their mid-twenties most of the time, yeah. and they've been inundated with this culture, and like they say, they might have come from a broken home and all. If you could just capsulize uh, kind of a signature problem in that generation. Well, I think, you know, I've, I've said this for the last probably 10 years, this, uh, this group that we have today probably are the nicest, most respectful group that I've ever had in, at the university. The, the other the, the flip side of that is they're very needy. And uh, I think that's that. Everybody gets a trophy and, mm -hmm. you know, you can't uh, settle for, because they all want A's, you know, they, they, they want, and yet if they're not careful, they sacrifice good work for that. I had a friend of mine that had a thing on her, a uh, professor I hired actually, she had a cool little sign that said, holy shoddy is still shoddy. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to graduate students out of our Bible colleges and out of our Christian colleges uh, that cannot stand shoulder to shoulder with people in the world mm -hmm. and be able to articulate what they know about, mm -hmm. what they need to know mm -hmm. about, what they're studying for. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Forget your GPA. I want to know what have you learned. And mm -hmm. that's a real difficult thing to Are there, Have you had people who were really disturbed about their own reactions or behavior or something, and you're, you're able to pull back the curtain and say, 
This is the problem. Yeah. Well, praise yeah. God for that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the truth, <laughs> the truth usually <laughs> comes in a nasty form. Uh -huh. You know, uh, I, I don't know anyone who's gone to the doctor and gotten a bad prognosis and walked out of there and said, Yay. yeah, it comes in a hard way. Mm -hmm. But what it does, it presents to you one of two choices. Either you accept the truth and do something about it, mm -hmm. or you continue the journey that you were on. The difference is that the truth will set you free. Yeah, in, in an overview, um, and you've been, what, 35, 36 years 36 there? 36 years in Southeastern, uh, yeah. What did you think of that generation kind of as uh, married people, married, are they ready for it, or are they completely messed up by the culture? I, you know, here again, I, I have these Hazel Baker-isms over there that, I, <laughs> that I'm known for. Oh, right One on. of them is, it's better to cry real hard for a short period of time than a little bit every day for the rest of your life. Yeah. Be sure that the choices that you make are good choices and decisions because once they're made, they take on a life of their own and they will live their lives, these decisions and choices they make. So be careful, I've had to tell students. And that you, you are what a, a wife should be or a husband should yeah, be. Yeah. Well, Don't just look at the one you're about to marry. Exactly, and just, you know, here again, being real uh, and do, in doing premarital, that's what I really deal with. Are you the person that she is falling in love with, or vice versa? Right. Or are you a pretender and a poser? Because <laughs> oh, whatever, they don't pretend when they're engaged. In no. six months, whatever you are will be revealed, <laughs> and all at once, these eyes are going to flash open. Oh, we're out of time. I wish I had a lot more time. Uh, <laughs> You gonna make notes on me when you leave here? Just, no, ma'am. You just a little, you know, analyzing. I've and... watched you for thirty. <laughs> oh, I came to long time. WCLF in, in 1981. Uh -huh. So I've known you that long. Yeah. And you, you. You're, <laughs> you're very kind. You're very kind. Uh, we're about out of time, but let me tell you, we have prayer partners standing by if you want to pray with someone, and I think we've had such an important discussion today, and I'm glad that. Uh, the professor doesn't live that far away, and maybe we could have him come back and just zero in on one topic. I, I really believe a lot of people do things over and over, and they went, why do I do that? It can be unraveled. It can be unlocked, for sure. Well, thank you for being with us, and please join me next time. Remembering, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.